Welcome everyone. Thanks for clicking on the Envision Prototypes YouTube channel. What we have here next to me is a set of fenders that a client brought to us to have restored. It's for a 1934 Chevy panel truck and this fender here is actually going to be a sample piece that we're going to be working from to restore the other two fenders. It's not in great shape but it's in good enough shape that we can get the curvatures from. They're not too bad. A lot of times the fenders will break through here. Guys will just overlap and weld them up and then cheese it up after that. But this one's in pretty good shape considering. And like I said, we're going to pull templates off of this one to copy onto the other pieces and restore them. And when I show you the other pieces, you're going to be shocked to see what we're starting with. It's scary. So as you can see, we have a pretty decent fender to work from over here. It's got some damage down below. That's not a problem because most of the material is here. On this fender, the whole bottom edge is missing. All this is wrinkled up through here. This has been pushed in. It's like they're using the fender to push things around. And uh, this whole bottom edge, somebody's tried to repair it before. And it is just a disaster. But when we come up into here, oh my gosh. It must have been a sale on popper bits. Because all that, somebody just chopped it out and slapped another panel on. Somebody did some welding here, old gas welding, but uh, it wasn't uh, done properly. And the whole curvature all the way around is just a disaster. So we have some damage up here on the top. Maybe they had an aftermarket Pep Boys uh, headlight on there. Who knows? Uh, this is the original headlight location. They probably welded the bracket in place so it wouldn't move around. That's all been caved in, so we have to take and bring that back out. And then as you come down here, there's a whole bunch of damage that I've been working on to plenish out, smooth out. And the basic process to get the fenders shaped back to what it was and then start repairing this. If we start making a patch up to here and all this here is all damaged, then there's no, it's not going to fit properly. We're going to pull profiles off of that one and make sure that this fender is a duplicate, just a near opposite. One thing we have that's going to help us repair that curvature is this buck that I created that clamps onto this structural box tubing piece and it basically copies this profile. I can take and move it over to the other side and uh, replicate the same curvature. Uh, this tucks in a little bit tighter here. Just have to clamp it properly and then we can replace the sections that need to be repaired. Like this one here is very nice through here and it'd be great if we could just cut that out but it doesn't work on this side. The other front fender is pretty much in the same shape there's a bunch of damage up on top there. Like I said, somebody welded that up and through there. And this leading edge is pretty much gone. So that all has to be repaired as well. So we're gonna get going on this piece here and start plenishing all this out so that have, we have the right curvature. And these lines through here are basically indications of where we need to cut it to remove this uh, damaged uh, rolled bead lip here and replace it with a new one. And that basically comes up all the way around up into here. Now this is a factory mount, fender mount, and we're using that as a reference point so that um, they match from side to side. If we took and cut all this away, then we really wouldn't have much to, to work with. The sweeping profile for the fender's outside curvature was transposed from the good side, the good fender, onto this side here. Now we have a reference as to what the shape of that curvature needs to be on this fender. Now, you can see the missing section there and the repair job that somebody did here. All that's gonna to have to come out. And some might start by just simply chopping that out and fabricating a new piece and then installing it. However, there's a bunch of damage down in here that I've been working on. And all this stuff through here, looks like somebody slid something across the fender or something fell on it. That all has to be planished out nice and smooth to restore the original curve of the fender. Because if we take and insert this patch here without this being repaired up through there and then down in there, if we try to repair that afterwards, we're going to repair it to the wrong shape. So there's some work in the front that needs to be done. Started working on that. You can see a lot of the little dents are still there, but most of them up and through here are gone. Still a bit of work to remove that. This section through here, this welded up joint, we'll deal with that later on. What I'm concerned about is all this wrinkling through here. 
So it has to be brought back to original. And then we can work on this. We're moving right along with this 34 Chevy front fender. After a whole lot of planishing to smooth out the curvatures and get everything to flow right, we took and tacked the broken sections of the fender to this wireframe roller coaster that we developed earlier so that nothing would move. But before cutting out that section, we made up this template here and we basically oversized it to that blue line that goes around the perimeter there. And we scribed it along this arc here and we added about an inch extra just so we have enough and we don't end up short when we finish the piece. After about four and a half minutes, we wheeled up this piece to cover up that hole. See, no more hole. I'll get this mocked up and we can uh, take it from there. Okay, so I slid this piece into place and as you can see, it fits pretty well. We are sitting on top of the bead over here as well as at the front. So that's the next thing we have to do. We'd have to take and run this through the reciprocating hammer and create that bead. And then we can take and do a final scribe around the perimeter. That's pretty close over there. Cut out the remaining metal and start tacking this piece, this replacement panel into place. Pretty shiny, eh? After a lot of racket, we have a very nicely formed bead that matches the one on the fender. It's an exact replica. So let me get this slid into place and we'll have another look at it before we start cutting away the remaining material. And there we are. It flows in from the back. Now we are sitting a little bit low because we're sitting on the bottom side of this bead. So as soon as we scribe and cut that away, that'll slide up and that'll line up perfectly all the way through. Same in the front there. That has to slide up and will match up with there. I have a tack right here and it's holding the metal kind of tight to the buck. So uh, when it, once that gets cut away, this will slide up and it'll match up nicely. All right, so we're making some nice progress with these 34 Chevy front fenders. The replacement section has been welded in and we're on the final stages of metal finishing. So we just need to do some pick and file work there, get that area so that it's a seamless repair as well as the front here. So we'll finish that off. As you can see, we're onto the uh, passenger side of this 34 panel truck fender repair. And we've taken care of that huge spare tire recess that they had, re-arched the fender. The fender had a different style of arch when you compared it to the uh, driver's side. And it was only because of the stamping. So since we got rid of that, we corrected the arc and uh, followed our wireframe buck there. We're also working out all those little dimples and it looks like a golf ball. This fender, there's so much going on, so many dents and dings, and we're slowly plenishing all those out, getting rid of them. And then one of the major jobs is to recreate this feature. It's basically been smashed down to nothing. So we need to uh, either cut that out, and really didn't want to cut that out because it's an original feature. So if we spent some time and just worked that out with a hammer and dolly, we should be able to restore it back to original. And then up and through here, well, that was totally broken, cracked, and repaired, repaired again, and we got rid of all that stuff, fabricated a new piece, and we're now installing it. Now you might notice the bead doesn't match up here, and it's because we're sitting down underneath that fender there, so once we take it, describe it, cut it, and move it up, it'll uh, fit properly. Down here is not too bad. And then we'll be moving on to the front. And again, this side is not as bad as the other side, but there's some damage through here. We need to hammer that out, recurve this, and then replace this section here. And we'll probably be replacing the uh, entire reinforcement rod. And then when you come into the inside here, this is really mangled through here. So we'll have to hammer that out, restore the curvature back to original, and then make up a new piece where necessary. That's our plenishing hammer there. Saves a little bit on the hammer and dolly, manual hammer and dolly work. But uh, you have to use it very carefully because you can overplenish the metal, overwork it, and then you're in a lot of trouble again. Mm -hmm. 
and we're moving on to the rear fenders and this is what we're working with here so a bunch of holes were drilled to pull out a previous uh, dent it didn't help matters much when all that's caved in down there we did some plenish we're hammer and dolly work to plenish that out so uh, we've gone ahead and wheeled up this new piece here that replaced that area below the blue line we need to finish up the feature that runs along the edge there and we'll line everything up make sure everything the curvatures fit we'll take and cut that piece out and we'll install this new section well the metal repairs on these 34 chevy panel truck fenders is done Give you guys a quick look before they head out for primer. You should be a big spare tire mount in here. Took care of that. That's gone. Took and manually recreated that edge. It was there, it just mashed down. So we see hammered that out and recreated that profile. A section up there was replaced where it was cracked. This rear fender here, that whole bottom edge was recreated. The reinforcement plates as well as the surface, the exterior surface was repaired and replaced on the two rear fenders there. That's where they bolt up to the running boards. There's a little bit of pitting here and there because of, well, due to the nature of their age and all that, but some high build primer will take care of that. Now these will be all taken down and sanded and prepped for final prime. Came out really well. There's some really sharp creases from whatever that this thing, this truck hit at one point, and uh, those are very, very, very difficult to remove. So it's not really in the scope to have that addressed. But overall, it came out quite nice. You can see that flows right down into the back there. So these will get bolted up to the truck. And then if there are any waves along this edge here, we can adjust that at that point. So this is just a quick overview as to what's kind of involved in repairing a set of big fenders like this. Didn't get into all the nuts and bolts as to how to weld the patches in, but that gives you an idea as to what's involved. Like when these came in, if you remember, and they had cracks, it looked like a big golf ball with all the dimples and dents in them, and all that's been smoothed out, blended in, and prep for some primer okay guys thanks very much for watching and hope you enjoy this episode take care